Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use the database documenter tool in Access, specifically to discover hidden object dependencies that the object dependencies tool might not catch. In my previous video on Friday, we talked about the object dependencies tool and how you can use it to see which queries or other objects are safe to delete that no one else depends on. Well, if you've got a form with a calculation in it, like a D sum, and in that calculation, you've got a query mentioned, well, the object dependencies tool is not going to find that because it's technically inside of a text string. So how can we locate things like this in our database that we might not want to delete? Well, that's where the database documenter tool comes in. Now, this tool is used so you can generate a file that has all of the information, all the properties, all the code, everything about all the objects or whatever objects you pick in your database. You can save it as either a text file or a PDF file or a Word document or whatever. And so you've got a backup of the stuff that makes up your database, right? You can essentially pick which tables, queries, forms, reports, macros that you want, right? Modules, it'll get your module code. Uh, all the objects are on this one. If you want to go to all objects and hit select all, that selects everybody. But I'm warning you, this can take a long time if you want to do all of the objects in your database. Um, current database properties and relationships, that kind of stuff. So you can take all this stuff and export it, right, and save it. And this way later on, you can also go back and look and see if you made some changes, where those changes are. There are third-party tools that you can use to give them this information, and they'll, it'll tell you where the changes in your database are. We'll talk about some of those at the end of the video. But what I want to focus on today is how we can use this tool to catch things that the object dependencies tool wouldn't catch. Like I mentioned before, we put that D sum in our customer form. So let's, let's analyze, let's just do a, a small segment of our database. Of course, if you're looking for things that are safe to delete, you're gonna wanna pick all of the objects, okay? At least all of the forms, reports, macros, and modules, okay? But let's just start with, um, let's analyze the customer table and the customer form. I'll just pick those two objects. I'll hit okay and it takes a moment and it generates this object definition file. And if you look at it, if you zoom in, it's basically a report. If you zoom in, it'll say, okay, here's customer T, all right, it's got the date and time right there. Here's all the properties for that table, right? And here's the columns, each, each field, customer ID, it's a long integer, there's its properties, first name, and so on. And there's a bunch of pages, how many pages? There's 37 pages, let me move this down just a bit, right? There's 37 pages just for these two objects. I did the whole database earlier, and this is a pretty small database, and it was over 300 pages, okay? But you can see, here's the information on the customer form. In fact, there's the code. It's got all the code in it, right? If you go back a page, right? Here's the, the code module in there. It's got all my VBA code, okay? So we can use this to also find dependencies that might just be in our, uh, our form fields and stuff, all right? They're not in the VBA code. They might be in the form fields. For example... I know, where's that guy? It's in the family size field. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. And these things are alphabetical, right? Family size. There it is right there. See? The control source is D sum, order total, order summary Q. That's the query that I'm looking for. This guy. That doesn't show up in the dependencies tool. Okay? So how can I search through this thing? Well, this doesn't, it looks like a report, but it doesn't really behave like a normal report. You can't just save it as a report. So what you can do is you can export it in different formats. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, self, probably the easiest way to do this is to export it as a text file and then just search in the text file. Aha, uh -huh, but that's not the best way to do it. Let me show you what happens. Well, let's export this as a text file. All right, browse to where you want to save it. I'm going to save it in my drive and it gives it a weird name. That's fine. I don't care. Hit OK and save it as what type of text do you want? Windows, DOS, doesn't matter. Windows is the default. All right, so it's exporting. It takes a second. All right, when we're done, oh, this thing's still flashing back here. Hold on. Okay, I don't want to save those steps. Go away. All right, when we're done, we get this nice text file. It's got all the same data in it, right? Okay, well, let's do a search, right? Control F. Let's find that uh, family size field. Well, we're actually really looking for order summary Q. Let's do a search for that. Oh, it doesn't show up. Why is it not showing up? That's the name of the field, right? Okay, how about let's go back and check for family size. That's why that's the last search because I was like, wait a minute, where is it? And there's family size. Okay. All right. So let's scroll down and look here. What's going on? Family size. All right. That's the field in the table. Let's keep going. All right. Okay. All right. There it is. There it is. There's the text box. 
Let's see. Okay, there's the controls. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. See what happened? Order summary queue got split onto multiple lines like that because of the text file. All right, so be careful of that. You can't rely on this being a text file because it's formatted as a report and Access is trying to do its best job to make this look like the report was. So what's the fix? Well, use a different format. Um, I, I recommend PDF for searching. PDF search fine. You can save it as an Excel file. It'll work just fine. You can save it as an RTF, a rich text file. Let's save it as a PDF. All right, same thing. We'll save it to my drive, publish it. This actually runs faster than a text file. All right, now the PDF opens up. Now let's search for search bar there it is now let's search for that order summary queue ready oh look at one of one or oh, zero one there it is right there see it found it because the PDF saves this stuff in proper table cells see so it doesn't break that onto different lines and even if it did kind of split it would still wrap around properly right because this is like one big block of text inside that cell okay so if you're going to use this database documenter to search for things that might not show up in the object dependencies, make sure you save it as a PDF or an Excel file or one of those formats that won't break the text up like text will. <laughs> You'd think text would be the best one, but it's not. Now, if you're interested more about this, I actually did a video a little while back where you can save an object like a form as text. So for example, if you want to send an, just an object, just a, a report or a form, you want to send the, you know, the information about it, you can, you can send it to someone else by email, for example. This came up because uh, one of my students, uh, they don't allow attachments, so he could send it as text in an email. And you can save and load the objects back and forth. There are also a handful of third-party tools that are better than the built-in database documenter if you're interested more on this. Uh, Isla Dogs is a really good one, the Database Analyzer Pro. MS Access Gurus have one. A lot of these are MVPs, like me. Crystal's got one, a code documenter. This one's been around forever, FMS is Total Access Analyzer. And they've got a total access detective, which you can use to detect changes between two versions. There's a list of them for you. I'll put links to all these down below if you want to check them out. Tell them I sent you. And just out of curiosity, I did try using ChatGPT to see if it could detect the changes between two databases. I took a simple database like this. I just exported a file that included customer T and customer F, saved it as a PDF. Then I made a few minor changes, saved that as another PDF, uploaded those both to GPT and said, hey, can you tell me the differences between the two? It read them, it analyzed them, but it got it wrong. It listed a whole bunch of stuff and no, I just made two little changes. So I, I'm confident one day it'll get there, but it's not there right now. GPT is getting better at writing code, but it still doesn't know Microsoft Access. So hey, OpenAI, if you want to use all my materials to train uh, chat GPT, uh, I, I'm open, give me a call. <laughs> or don't call me, email me. <laughs> I got lots and lots of material you can use to, cha to train the AI with, just saying. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for today's video, folks. That's your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more.
and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.